Hi everyone, welcome to Scalar Academy. I am Aman and in this video, we are going to create this image slider. As you can see, it is showing us images one by one. There is some time gap between images, right? And after the time is over, it shows us next image. And there is some animation as well. And also we have these two buttons. If I click on it, it will show the previous image, right? And similarly, we have this next button. It will show us the next one. So without further ado, let's just start. I have these two files, index.html and style.css. So image slider and uh, let me just link the style.css to it as well. Let's uh, create the structure. For the structure, what I simply want, as you can see here, uh, we don't have much. We just have container and inside this, we have images and button. Okay. So I'm going to create a container. Uh, let's call it slider. Okay. Inside this, I'm going to create a image, basically image container, right? Or we can call it slide. Inside this, let's have image. So we have this, this is for one image. And we have, as we have three images. So let's have Let's have three of these. Let's have button as well. Two divs uh, button into two. Two divs uh, dot btn into two. Two divs for button. Cool. Now it looks good. And the four images I'm going to use unsplash. You can choose any three images of your choice. Let's just have some images of nature. This looks good. Uh, this looks good as well. This looks good as well. Okay, open image in new tab. Let me just copy the address. Okay, have it here. Hold open image in new tab. Similar thing for this. Open image in new tab and I just copy it. Uh, let me just close the tabs and paste it here. So we'll go live with the file and see. Now you can see we have three images, one after another. We don't want this. We'll settle it. Obviously, let's have a previous button and the next button. Give it another class as well. Uh, call it uh, next and uh, call this previous. Okay. Yeah. Here we do have these two buttons and we have this. Let me just uh, give it some styling. Before styling, let me just introduce you to some property. Display property, right? If I give none, what happens? All the three images will be gone because I have said like two images that uh, you are going to display nothing. Don't just display anything. Okay. So everything is gone. But uh, what I want, I want uh, one image, right? So here, if I put block, so all three will come, right? And if I give none, so all three will go. What I can do, I can simply just come here at this, right? I can come at this style. Inline styling basically, it has higher precedent, so it will work. The style or display, I'm going to give it block. Okay, so let's see. Okay, I have given it to instead of give it to div, right? Give it to slide class. I have given it directly. Concept remains same. So you can see now we have one image, right? So this is the main property we are going to use throughout the pro project. Basically, main concept is of display. Because each time we want two images to be displayed, none and one of block, right? This is the main concept here. Now the next thing, let me just give it a style. For all, uh, I'm going to use box sizing, border box, and give by default margin zero and padding as well zero. Here uh, now we have a slider. To our slider, mm, give it height to hundred bh. And give it to, to our images, all the images, give width 100% and height to give it 100 ways so that we don't have to scroll. Good. Now it looks good. We have our buttons. We'll obviously we are going to settle them as well. PTN class, uh, let me give them position absolute so they comes out from the hierarchy like images. After image, they should they are showing. I want to give them position absolute, so they will come out. Now 
position uh let me just put dot now yeah so they are here and uh, let me just give it from top to give it to 45 percent from top okay oh uh, you can see they are a bit tiny here they are tiny 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 so let me just increase the font size or give them four or five them any number i think should go over yeah let me give it four so one i want one button to here and another one to the right but we can do or we can just simply leave prev on next button to prev let me just give it from left to two rep and this from right to two rep let's see yeah this looks good these two looks good and by default give it them color white color white so uh, white smooth i think white smooth will look good there is no major difference but that's it looks good. okay let me give uh, it some padding as well mm, give it to uh, like one rep yeah okay this looks good i think for the styling that's it we don't want any more styling as of now what we want we want to add the functionality of the next and previous button right let me just add the script here first i what i'm going to do i will be selecting uh, i'll be selecting all the slides document dot query selector all dot yeah slide so by this i have all the slides what i want to add now i want two more thing that is previous button document dot query selector dot grid and i want to next button as well document dot query selector or dot next right did i miss anything yeah we have next button right. we want to add a given listener to our next button or previous button we want to add this to what okay both of them whenever someone clicks on it i want this function to run so what we want whenever someone clicks on this button whenever someone clicks on this button what i want i want to the image which is showing now i want this display to be none right i don't want it to be seen right and i want the next image the image which is going to come after this i want to see that right so let me just have a variable also let current slide at the starting is going to be zero right so i want to make the display none of current slide okay so slides we have array of slides right we have selected all i want current slide dot display dot style dot display to be none so okay let me see if i click on the next button does it have and yeah it is none right so so far so good when i am clicking on it the current slide is going to be none so i want to find the next slide so let's see next slide is going to be current slide plus one okay i hope you know the cycle for the for cycle what we do or slides dot length we give the mod with the length of the array like suppose we have an array uh, let me just uh, give you an example to get this one suppose we have an array of uh, size this one two three let me just let me just have some random numbers to it yeah this array has size six so if my index my index can be zero one or two right for the next uh, index if i am just adding plus one for the next index if i am just adding plus one what will happen when uh, my index is zero so next index will be one so far so good when my index is one and the next index will come out to be two but when uh, my index is two and i'm uh, my index is two and i'm going to get the next index as index plus as index plus one it will come out to be three so it will show us error if we just simply walk if we are going to call to array of three it will show us error so what if we have to do the cycle what we'll do we just simply give it the mod to length of array so giving the mod to length of the array it will simply 
just to be giving it an and length of it. It will make sure when you give mode by length of the array, it will make sure that your index never goes out of length or it won't be even equal to the length. Okay. That's why I have given the mod. Cool. Mm. Now I have made a display of current slide to now. Let me just make the next slide display to block. Okay. Let's see if I'm clicking on it. No, nothing. I haven't seen. Oh, sorry. I have given none here as well. Let me just put block and see. So you can see we have next image. But if I click again, will we get uh, next image? No, we are not getting the next image. Why? Because uh, I have not updated the current slide. So let me just in update. Current slide is will be next slide. Now what happened? We had current index. Okay. We have current slide. We got next slide using this. Now we have next slide. Now we are showing this. So logical speaking, this has become our current slide. So let's see. It's working fine. Right. We are able to able to see, right? It's working fine. Similarly, we can we can add even listener to our previous button. Okay. Now we will have uh, our previous slide. It is going to be if my current slide is equal equal zero, right? If my current slide is going to be is equal zero, then my previous slide is going to be slides dot length minus one. Else, it is going to be current slide minus. Like suppose my current slide is zero, so I'm not. I cannot uh, just decrease one. It will be minus one, and it will show us error. So better idea is to if it's zero, then give it the uh, size of array minus one and if it's uh, if it is greater than zero just simply decrease so same thing we want to do here slides of current slide and go to style just make that display to none and slides of previous slide previous slide style display set it to block now one more thing we want to change the current slide to previous slide. as you can see both of these button are working fine uh, yeah we can surely add some power effect to the button let me just add dot btn or uh, background color just give it some light gray mm not as it is and so on or or sony yeah we have this uh, just give it the color of cool and uh, here we can just simply give it border radius of some pixel let's see how four pixel looks like looks good we can increase and decrease obviously as per your Nice. This looks good. Now, if you notice uh, in our original project, even though I don't click on next or previous button, it just keeps me showing next images, right? So this is the last, last two functionality which we need to implement in our project. Okay. So if you notice uh, what's happening, it's just uh, clicking on the next button, right? after some time so for implementing some functionality after an interval we have set interval javascript we just need to tell him the function and time like after which interval you want to call the function let's say we want to call it after five seconds now what is the function if function is just click on the next button so instead of just writing function here what we can do we can uh, write the next function here and use it to in our event listener as well as set interval. Cool. Let's see if it works. For seeing the result, let me just reduce the time to one second. Uh, it's three zero, right? Yeah, three zero. So you can see it's changing. It's uh, changing 
it's working. We can set it to five seconds, five second interval as well. And for the animation part, we can simply add uh, to our slides animation name. Just uh, I'm going to give it fade duration. Let me just give it five second timing function. Delay iteration. Let me just remove all this. Is you can choose anything of your choice which uh, looks good. And here, let me just add keyframes. Uh, fade add to zero percent. Keep the opacity to zero. Net hundred percent. Keep the opacity to one. Now that's the animation we are going to add. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, it looks good, right? So that's it. We have completed our project.